Hello, welcome to this lesson of linear algebra. Let's continue solving eigenvalues, and we'll now do a three by three matrix. Uh, you'll find that the process is the same, but sometimes the details are a little tougher. Uh, so the matrix here, five, four, four, negative seven, negative three, negative one, seven, four, two. So that is our matrix. We want to find the eigenvalues of that matrix. So what you do is you take the determinant of the characteristic matrix. Five minus lambda, four, four. Negative seven, negative three minus lambda. Negative one, seven, four, two minus lambda. So same thing, different, different day. You just take the minus lambdas on the diagonal and you're setting this determinant equal to zero. Now you can immediately see how much more work you have in front of you. Even though you can write it down easily, now you have to find the determinant of this three by three, which is a lot more work than finding determinant of two by two. So everything increases in complexity, but you know how to do this. Let's expand it about the first, um, the first row. So what we'll have is five minus uh, lambda. That's the first guy here. If we cross these out, this is what you're left with the submatrix. So it will be times the determinant of negative three minus lambda, negative one, four, and two minus lambda. That's the first term. Don't forget your negative sign because of that cofactor. And then you have a four times determinant. And when you cross this with this, you're left with this, 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 and this. Negative seven, negative one, seven, and two minus lambda. And then we have the third term, which is also a four times determinant. If we cross this and this, we're left with this submatrix here, negative seven, negative three minus lambda, seven and four. Okay, so now we have something that's a little bit more complicated. So there's kind of good news and bad news here. The good news is it's easy to write down. The bad news is it's a little bit more work. But the good news again is that you know how to take the determinant of all of these two by two matrices. This is a crisscross. This is a crisscross. This is a crisscross. But you see how the complexity of it just jumped up a lot, even though none of it's hard. It's just you're, you're more likely to make an error. So what I'm going to do is if you were to do this crisscross and if you were to do this crisscross and this crisscross, what you would have is five minus lambda. This polynomial that pops up as a result of this is lambda squared plus lambda minus two. And then you're gonna have minus four. This one that pops up as a result of this is seven lambda minus seven. And this guy that pops up as a result of that is seven lambda minus seven. Rarely, rarely do I skip steps, but in this case, I think it really is not very advantageous. I think you can understand that in order to get this determinant, you multiply this times this minus this times this. Then you expand and simplify terms. Same thing here, same thing here. And then this comes directly from this determinant. This comes from this one, and this comes from this one. I could do all of that, but we've done it so many times, I don't think it's really terribly helpful for me to do it again. And again, when you get down to this level, you can see I have this term multiplied by uh, a polynomial of degree two. I've got this times this and this times this. So even multiplying all of this stuff in simplifying terms just leads to a lot of algebra. But when you do all of that, you get negative lambda cubed plus four lambda squared plus seven lambda minus 10 is equal to zero. Again, I rarely skip steps, but I think you know how to multiply this. I think you know how to multiply this. And this is just multiplying the five into each of these terms and the negative lambda into each of these terms. And then you have a bunch of terms in all degrees of lambda and you simplify them. So it's just a lot of, uh, a lot of algebra, but what you end up with is this cubic polynomial here. And when you solve it, you should get three eigenvalues, one for each degree of the polynomial, okay? Now it turns out you can factor this. It'll be, it'll be lambda minus five, lambda minus one, lambda plus two. Now, how did I factor that? Let me get back to that, answer that in just a second. Let me finish the problem up. Lambda is gonna be positive five, lambda is one from there, moving it over, and then lambda is negative two from there. These are the three eigenvalues. These are the three eigenvalues here. Now, going from here to the solution is quite a jump because there's no bulletproof way to really factor these cubic and higher polynomials that work for every single case that I can remember in my head all the time. So what do I suggest you do if you get to this point? Well, there's a couple of things. Most of you are allowed to use calculators at this level in your education. 
So I would put the polynomial in there and factor it. If you're a professor and you see the student write all of this stuff down and all he's doing is factoring a polynomial in the calculator and giving roots, you, you know, he knows what he's doing. You're going to get full credit. Or if you really had to do it by hand, you could guess a root. You know, these eigenvalues that you get in typically these problems, you're going to have at least one eigenvalue that's going to be 0 or 1 or 2 or a real low number like that. So if I would have guessed and found eigenvalue of 1, then I could try to factor and try to factor out a 1 out of there, lambda minus 1. And then I would have a second degree left over that I could run the quadratic formula on or that I could try to factor. So it's a little bit of a guesswork involved. I suggest you dump it in your calculator. That's what I would do. I mean, when you get into engineering, you're going to have systems of equations all the time. You can use the solver to find the answers. What we want to know is that you can take and, and, and formulate the problem and you know what you're doing. The details of something like this, I mean, while there, it's great if you can do it by hand, it's, it's also a good time saver to be able to use what you have availability, uh, available on your test to use. So this is how we did it for a 3x3 three three matrix. I want to do one more quick example for eigenvalues on a 4x4 four four matrix just to kind of show you how you would scale what we're doing here. And uh, we'll go from there. But notice that the characteristic equation we got was a cubic, which is because of the 3x3 three three nature that led to three distinct eigenvalues. Values and when we go on to find the eigenvectors, we'll have vectors associated with each one of these guys. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.